Hello and welcome back to DIY Book. You might not have been away, so it might not be back for you, but I've been away since the last episode. In fact, I've moved house from where I was living before to the north of Scotland, so that's also involved uh, creating a new office studio thing at home, which has gone really well. And now I'm back and I'm ready to go ahead with this next episode in which I show you how to make a hardcover book. So here are the materials that you'll need in order to make a hardcover book. First, you need paper for the inside of your book, and you can use whatever it is that you want to write on ultimately. Uh, I'm going to use just regular office laser printer paper here. And you need some kind of paper for the cover of your book. There are a lot of different papers available from craft shops and whatnot that might have fabric on the front or some sort of pattern. But what's important is that it has a paper backing so that it will hold glue well. You'll also need some sort of fancy paper that you want to use for your end papers, and that's these bits, which hold the inside part onto the cover. You'll need two different colored pencils, and this will all make sense later on. Uh, glue of some sort, usually for bookbinding people use a PVA glue, which is a white glue. Uh, I cheat, I also use a glue stick, and some sort of brush for spreading the glue around. A heavy thread, like a linen thread, and a needle. Now I use a uh, tapestry needle, they're, they're blunter because I don't need them to be sharp for this. And some wax for coating the, the thread, which makes it easier to work with, less likely to tangle. An awl, or something similar, could just be a needle, something sharp, to poke through the pages. And again, you'll see how we do that. Some sort of gray cardboard, uh, not the corrugated stuff because that's kind of puffy. This goes inside the cover of the book. So the first step is to trim the paper down to whatever size you want. Uh, for me, I live in Europe, so I'm using international sizes. It's an A4 sheet cut in half to make A5, which I then fold in half, and that's about the size of a book I like create something like this. You can make something full-sized if you like, it just means you're using more material to cover it, ultimately. And when you get to the cover, you're using a big piece of paper, so you want to make sure that if you're doing a full-sized book, you've got something big that will cover it. So, here I go. So that's the last of my inside pages ready. And now, you need to fold them in half. Now, folding each sheet individually can take a long time, and when I'm producing novels, I do a lot of this. So I've invested in this piece of mailroom equipment, which is a paper folder by a company called Martin Yale. So it's very noisy. One second here. It's the ultimate cheat. Go. Now that would normally have taken me about half an hour. It's not perfect, but trimming takes care of a lot of that. Now that you've got your pages folded, the next thing to do is to create groups of pages which are called signatures. And I tend to go for five pages nested into each other. So I count out five pages and then go one into the next, into the next, into the next, into the next. And why I choose five pages is because any more than that and you start to get too much of what they call creep, where the inside pages are poking out. And if you're not going to be trimming your book, that becomes more and more pronounced as you get these sort of uh, peaks to your pages. So take all your pages and group them into signatures. Once you have your pages grouped together into signatures, like so, the next thing to do is to mark where you're going to put the holes for sewing the signatures together. And it's important to use two contrasting colors, I find, so that when you've done that and, and made the hole through the marks that you've made, you can still see which way is which. Um, this will make more sense in a second. So gather the pages together as tightly as possible, and then make a mark part way up from the bottom. And another mark, and switch colors, 
and go up a little further. Mark here. And another mark. Where they are doesn't really matter because this isn't a part of the book anyone's ever going to see when it's finished. Although it's good to keep it far away from the edge if you are going to be trimming because, as experience has taught me, if you do too close to the edge you might end up chopping right where you've done all your stitching. So after this, take each signature and open it back up again. And then where you've made these colored pencil marks, use your awl or needle or whatever and poke holes through the pages. So now I've got the pages of my book grouped into signatures, these signatures marked along the spine, and then I've, using my awl, put holes in all of these. So the next thing is to cut some string, or thread, or whatever you choose to use, could be dental floss, uh, to stitch these together. And the length to use is about one or two lengths less than the number of signatures you have. Now I've got 14 signatures here, so I'm going to use one, two, three, and then on it's 12 lengths. And then once I've counted those out and cut them off, I'll use this tea light to wax the thread. And it still will want to tangle a bit because it's a really long piece of thread, but if you wax it, it'll be a little less inclined to twist in on itself and uh, it'll make it a little bit more easy to work with. So I have 14 signatures here. I'm going to call them 1 to 14. And then the holes on them, I'll call them A, B, C, and D. So this is signature 1, hole A. And that's the first one I'm going to put my needle and thread through. So I go into 1A, pull this all the way through, it's just leaving a bit of a tail there. And then I come out, signature 1, hold B. And uh, again, if this gets too confusing, it's totally all right. It took me a long time to get this. And again, it's just one of a number of different ways to do this. Um, there are sewing instructions that you can download from the DIY book section at hamishmcdonald.com. It's also in the links section. There's the quick and dirty book binding guide, which you can get in uh, A4 and letter size pages to print out and follow. And that'll describe what I'm talking about here. So having gone into uh, 1A out of 1B, we pick up signature two and put the needle and thread into 2B and avoid the obvious Shakespeare pun. And particularly at the beginning, you'll find that the thread really wants to loop around everything in sight. But just keep pulling it through slowly as possible so that it doesn't knot up. Okay. We've gone into 2B, and we come out to C. Pull that through, and I go back to signature 1, and I go into 1C. Pull that out. There we go. And then from the inside, I go up from the middle, out 1D, and try and avoid the knot that wants to form there, yay! Alright, out there, and then I go... Alright, so here we witness the non-convenience of converged devices, and making a podcast using one's phone is not always advantageous when the phone rings. So, where we were at, let's see. We've gone from signature 1, gone A, into A, out of B, into 2B, out of 2C, into 1C, and that should... Where am I? And I've gone out of 1D, into 2D, and yes, so I've come in at 2D, 
Now I go out of 2C. Try not to get this to tangle as a twist around the middle. Right, so I come out of 2C. And you may notice that there's a pattern to this, that B and C are where the next signature gets joined on. So I've come out of 2C, I pick up signature 3, and I go into 3C. And I thread through. And now I go out of 3B, coming back up here. And I go into 2B, which will link signatures 3 and 2 together. So, carefully, carefully. There we go. And I go out of 3A, no, sorry, 2A. And since this is sticking out here, and I want to keep this tail in 1A from disappearing, I'll just tie these together. And that will keep that first little tail from slipping away. So now I go into 3A. Out, 3B, and again B and C are always when the next signature gets joined on. So I pick up 4 and I go into 4B. I'm making sure that I hit the hole all the way through that up a bit more. So into 4B and carefully, carefully pull that through. Yes, and even with the wax, it really wants to knot up. So there we go. So that's into 4B, out of 4C. This gets easier at the end when the thread is shorter. Right, so that's out of 4C, and then I go into 3C, and that locks those two signatures together. And now I come out of 3D and you'll see these two are not actually joined together at the end. So there's an opportunity here to, to link them up. So I'll go underneath that thread and do a little loop, loop stitch there just to a little knot so thing and then they are held together and now I'll go into 4D pull that through and out of 4C And again, B and C are always where the next signature gets linked on. So this is signature 5. I go in at C. Just make sure it holds through there. Yep. I 
It's open on the side. It's not open on the side. Here we go. So into 5C. Out of 5B. Now I lock these two together by sending that into 4B. And then in signature 4, I'll come out of 4A. And again, at the head here, these last two signatures are not connected together, so there's an opportunity to make another little loop stitch and lock that together. There we go. So in at five A. Out of five B and B and C are when the next signature is linked on. So I take signature six and go in at six B. Then I come out six C. and go in at 5C. Then I come out at 5D. And again, there's a loose space between those two, so I'll do a little loop stitch to hold them together. And of course you glue the whole thing at the end, so <laughs> why this is all necessary is arguable. Uh, so basically once all the signatures are sewn together like this, we'll glue them and you'll see that in a bit. But with perfect binding, um, there there is no, there's none of this. But you'll notice that a perfect bound book, when it's sat on its spine, doesn't hold open quite the same way a signature or case-bound book does. So that's the real advantage, aside from the hardcover, which again, a hardcover doesn't fit on a paperback very well if it's perfect bound, because it doesn't sit quite the same way. So you could produce a novel like this. Sorry, I've just gone from... <laughs> You'll have to follow the stitching guide at this point. So I've gone Out, sorry, out of 5D into 6D, and they come out of 6C, and here's the opportunity to add on another signature. So, I'll show you. Here's one of my earlier attempts to turn a novel into one of these, and they look very nice, but there's so much work, and each signature involves a more complicated version of imposition because it's not just uh, one, two, three, four, it's one, uh, however many it is, what's at the end of the signature? His page, I guess it would be eight. So they're nested pages, which makes it more complicated. And with all the sewing and the gluing and everything, it's really not cost efficient to produce a hardcover novel, but you can. The uh, thing is, people seem to really like blank hardcover books, so they make great gifts. So I'm going to skip ahead here to the end of this and hope that you've got the gist that B and C are where you add on the next signature, and A and D are where you link together the loose spaces between the signatures. 
And again, there's the sewing guide on my website. So you can download that and it'll spell this out so you can go a little more slowly and not have to try and keep up with the video. I also don't want the video to end up being so ginormous that you can't download it. So I'll come back in just a sec. So on my last page, I had the thread coming out and since it was an even number, it didn't have all three of the loops inside. So what I did was I just skipped over the middle hole and went back into the same signature, came out and tied it off at the end. Um, don't know if that makes sense, but hopefully the sewing guide will help you with that. <clears throat> I got these pieces of plastic and cut them down to size from a craft shop. You don't need to do this. You can glue this, the signatures now that they're sewn together like this however you want, but I just find this keeps it nice and tight. And then I put glue along the top, and then I'll just use a little stick, I won't use the brush for this, and fill in all the gaps between the signatures. And I'll put this aside to dry, which means that this is probably going to be a lousy movie continuity wise because I may be wearing different clothes the next time you see me. But in a minute of your time, I'll be right back. So here's the book, all nice and dry, and it's a day later. So I'll take it out. Um, another thing you can do to reinforce this and to later hook it into the book a little better is when you glue this, you can put a piece of mull on the spine. Uh, also show you you can put that in at a later stage this is basically I mean you can buy it as a bookbinding accessory but it's basically cheesecloth or gauze that's been reinforced with some uh, sizing so the next step is to make your end papers now this is your book block the glued and sewn together chunk of pages and the end papers are what holds that into the cover so I've got a piece of paper here that I want to use and I'm going to take my book block and just measure it out and I need enough paper to fold over and fit on either side of that. So I'll cut this and be right back. So here's that piece of paper cut in two and I'm just going to fold this over that over and make another measurement which is to make sure that it's the same width as the book and then I'll trim these again. So now I've got my end papers all trimmed to size and there's writing on the back of this one because it's from an old wallpaper sample book which I quite like the paper consistency of. Uh, hopefully that won't show too much inside. So what I'm going to do now is take a glue stick and attach the end papers to the book block with that. And I sort of felt like a glue stick wasn't a legitimate tool to use here, but the more and more I used it, I appreciated that it's dry, so that means that these pages aren't going to get all wrinkled from the dampness of a liquid based glue. So put that on there. It's much easier to work with and you can reposition it somewhat within the first couple of seconds after you put it on. And have a lot of control over where it goes. And then I'll put this on. So basically the end papers are almost like one more sheet from your book, just of a fancy paper. So that's my book with its end papers on. And what I'm going to do next is to trim this so that it's nice and even. Now, I said at the beginning that I wanted to show you how to make a book in a way that didn't require any specialist equipment. And theoretically, you could skip this stage. The thing is, the book block, as it is, has some ridges in it as the signature's nested pages creep out a little bit. 
and there are some books you'll see where that's kind of kept as a style. But if you want something perfectly flush, you do need to use something like a guillotine, or this is a book press, which I'm going to use a plow with. And again, you don't have to do this, but in making my novels, the perfect band books, it's something I really wanted to do. So it was worth it for me to invest in the equipment. And like I said in the last episode, first I got a guillotine and that was kind of working for me, but it was pretty random in terms of where it would cut. And it wasn't completely predictable. It was very frustrating to get to the edge of the text and have it not line up perfectly with the edge of the book. And of course, as I corrected that, it would just go further and further and I'd often end up just ruining the whole book at the very end, which was incredibly frustrating. So my next step forward was actually step way into the past. And this is how this used to be done. And what is involved here is, this is um, a, they call it a tub, and this is a lying press. So I put my book into the lying press and I can set it exactly where I want. And I need a piece of backing board here because how it works is line it up just so, tighten these threads and then this piece is the plow and this is two pieces of wood threaded and there's a blade underneath. This fits into a track here and goes back and forth and so the blade cuts exactly where I see it's going to and you just need the backing board there so that the blade doesn't hit the opposite side or hit its own frame there because that crunches the last page, makes a mess, and isn't good for the blade. So, just very lightly, and I'm told you shouldn't be chunking through a whole bunch of pages at once. It should just very, loosen that a bit, very lightly slide back and forth. And the blade, I'll put a little rubber stopper in there so that it doesn't rock back and forth quite so much. And the blade will slowly chop through the pages. Now this is a lot slower than using the guillotine, but it produces an exactly perfect result. So let me do that, and I'll come back and I'll show you what I've created with it. So this is the result. It's all nice and smooth to the touch, and it good right angles, just as I would want it. Now, like I say, that's a pretty specialist piece of equipment, and if you're just doing this for a couple of books here and there, you won't necessarily want to invest in something like that. Um, what you can do is deliberately go in the other direction and make the pages even more rough. And this is something I got last time I was in Canada. It was just a couple of dollars, and it's a decal edge ruler. And what you do is put down a piece of paper here and just tear it along the edge. And it gives you a nice, deliberate looking ragged edge. Like back in the olden days when books would come with the outside edges sealed up and you had to cut them with a knife. So if you, it's it's a bit of a schlep to do it, but if you go through and you tear all the edges of your pages like this, you will get something like... this. And this is just one that I did. So you can create a deliberately rough look, if you like. So, the next thing for me is to create the cover boards for this book. And those are the things that give it its hard texture, so that's inside here. Now, what I want to do is make it so that it will cover this, and then a little bit extra, because you want there to be some overhang, because that's kind of what we've come to expect from a hardcover book. So, I'll just measure that out. And so I want to cover the book, and then just a little bit extra. So I'll want two 
of the same size front and back and then I'll also need a piece for the spine and that will go in there. So I'll cut those now and be right back. Great, so now I've got my front and back cover boards cut and one for the spine. Yeah. Another thing you can do, if you like, is to put a rounded corner on the edges of your pages. And I use a little scrapbooking tool, although scrapbooking and bookbinding are separate. I keep maintaining. Um, so what I've done here when I made this little diary for myself was use that to give it little corners and little, then I put a little pocket at the back. Like unto a rather famous brand of book that I will not mention. So now that I've got these, I can attach them to my cover paper. And I've got some paper here from a local craft shop. And lay them out here like this. And I'll put it so that it covers the front and there's a bit of a hinge. So I don't want the spine piece to be but right next to it. I'll give a bit of a space so that there's room for this to open and close. And then I'll put the other board about the same. And you're going to be folding these edges over, so you want to make sure that there's enough left over there. And this doesn't need to be an exact cut here, so I'll just do that. And use that for a small book later on. And next step is to glue this down. So each of these needs to be attached to the front. Again, I'm going to use a glue stick because it's nice and dry and I can position these exactly where I want them. The first one's position is not quite so critical. So I'll put it here and I've tried to find the bore, the, the grain of this so that it will buckle outwards rather than inwards. It's personal preference. Some people get really hung up on grain. I don't really pay much attention to it, which makes me not a purist. So that's in place. And again, I want to make sure that there's enough room for a proper hinge for this. So I'll glue the spine piece. Just a little bit a ways away from the first one. And then this last cover piece, I'll put the same distance away again. And there, that's in place. So I've got a bit extra there on the end. Just get rid of that so it's not in the way when I'm gluing. So the next thing is to glue in the corners. So I'll take each corner, give it a fold, and I'll use this just to tack it down. And they tend to want to pop up a couple of times while you're doing the other ones, but maybe for the purposes of demonstration they won't do that today. So, that one, and that one, and you might want to put paper down on your desk because there's nothing worse than finishing your book and noticing you've got a blob of glue on the cover. So now we'll do the sides. We'll just along there and I try to make sure there's a lot on because I still feel like glue stick isn't really a kosher tool to be using but it seems to do the job and for something like this that I carry around all the time or the uh, wallets that I make that it, it, it holds it does the job so Effectiveness is the measure of truth, as they say. So, put 
some on there. And on there. Yeah, try and get that as tight as possible because sometimes there's a there can be a gap between the edge of the board and where the paper is unless you push it right in. And then be careful not to get glue on the cover. Do this side. There's my cover ready. So the next thing is to attach my book block to the cover. And here, because I really want to make sure it holds, I'm going to use a liquid glue and a brush. Now, another thing that I skipped is you can use a piece of mull here, and mull is fancy book binding material that you can spend lots of money on. I believe it's just gauze or cheesecloth with sizing in it. When you're gluing your spine you can put it on then. I'm going to put it on here now it just, just to strengthen. It's not quite wide enough. I'm going to use another piece. So here we go. Cut a piece of mole. Just the right size for the hinge here. So it's yet another thing to buy if you're money is burning a hole in your pocket and you're desperate to pick up bookbinding supplies. So what I'm going to do is take that off for the second and just very scientifically put glue on here like one does with mustard or ketchup and a hot dog and then just paint this out. Try not to make it too thick or too wet and yet Get it out to the edges somewhat so that it will hold on to the book block well. I'm going to put some here to hold on them all. And after saying mole, I now have Paul McCartney stuck in my head. Apparently that's an old traditional song that he just ripped off. That's what I've heard. Not to malign the man over much, but... Here's the mole. Now I'm well out of the way. I will edge that up a little bit more. Put a bit more on there just to make sure it holds. Often fall prey to these some is good, more is better temptation, but it's not true. So I'll position this right where I want it. Put it down there. And then flip this over and try and put this in roughly the same place on the other side. And press that in. A little bit squint. I can live with that. So now I want to put this aside to dry, but since this glue is so wet, I want to protect the inside pages. So I'll put a piece of grease proof paper there, or waxed paper, as you may call it in North America. Um, another piece here, and then I'll put a Kleenex there just to pick up any extra moisture and you want to make sure that there's no glue going to touch the Kleenex because I've had some books where you get little tufty bits glued on. It's quite annoying. They're hard to get rid of. Put another Kleenex there. And greaseproof paper. And then a 
little bit more. Piece of paper on either side, inside and out. And I put this back between these boards. And clamp it. Now here's the really fun part, is unveiling it, seeing what you came up with. So, plastic, and paper, and pages inside, and, oops, one more, here is my hardcover book. And if you give it a bit of a crease there, not to break the spine, but use a bone folder and just crease along the hinge there. Just gives it a nice booky appearance. And there you go. And that concludes the second part of the DIY book process. The first part was idea to novel, where you went from not quite knowing what you were going to write to having a completed manuscript. In this part, the novel to book process, you went from having that manuscript to laying it out and creating a physical book that people can buy, which leads us naturally to the third part, the book to reader process, which is everything I've figured out so far about creating a website as a public presence to give people a place to go and buy your book from you so that they can have it. And I hope this has been useful so far. I'll see you next time. And in the meantime, happy bookbinding. Cheers.